Ladies and gentlemen, if you happen to play chess once in a while on this great platform chess.com, which I happen to do sometimes, you get a feeling to get paired with someone who is much higher rated than you. And before you know it, you still think that you're doing a great job in the opening and in the middle game, but what you completely miss is that your opponent already won moves ago. And so suddenly, out of nothing, you get Checkmated. What you can do is go on chess.com actually to click the game review button and analyze the game. And I don't know with you, my ratings in chess are horrible. I oftentimes don't even understand where I made a mistake when the arrows point in different directions. Well, this video is all about that. A few weeks ago, I made this video with a cool thumbnail I thought my, so myself. So Mozart Sonata Facile. A piece for beginners or not? In this video, we went through this piece and also connected that piece to not only mainstream or today's performances, how this piece is regularly played today, and we connected that to a very cool score of the 19th century that had a metronomarch given by Moscheles. That metronomarch quarter note 152 was actually higher than most performances today. And the point of that video was Ignaz Moscheles, partly contemporary of Beethoven, he didn't know Mozart, but he gave a metronomarch clearly knowing actually acknowledging the fact that this piece was meant by Mozart to be for beginners, but he marked it in a tempo that is actually reserved even today for the top virtuoso players. So does it make sense? Well, in a single beat world where we take that metronomarch literally, like we do read metronomarchs today, in that world, that doesn't make any sense. But in the whole beat metronome practice world where we actually have the metronome, where we actually take two ticks for one beat of that metronome mark, that makes a lot of sense. I even featured a big real beginner of today playing that piece exactly in half, quote unquote, the tempo that Moscheles gave. Now, what has all of this to do with chess? And by the way, if you happen to play chess on chess.com, leave me a comment in the description box. I would like to know how many of you actually play chess. And before you get any expectations of me as a chess player, as I said, I'm a terrible chess player, but I'm not that horrible. When I go back in history, read some facts, read some sources and connect the dots. The WBMP is just one of those instances where you have to recreate a situation from a multitude, from more than just one source, one fact. Contrary to politics, one-liners in any attempt to reconstruct historical facts or just history or a historical context do not have any meaning, any value at all. It's all about connecting the dots, connecting facts, connecting sources, connecting this person with that person, this score with that score, see if it correlates, see if it corresponds, see if you can build that picture that makes sense. And in that regard, I think my ratings are a little bit higher than my ratings are on chess.com. And now, can I repeat the fact that I happen to be blessed to have a wonderful community. You are part of that. And I'm so happy that you're here. And I see so many of you go into the comment sections and ask questions or just leave a comment or just say thank you. I truly appreciate that. And anyone's comments, I appreciate. Also comments in which people do not agree with what I'm saying. As long as we keep the discourse, the conversation, nice in the comment section, I'm fine with that. But that doesn't mean that I agree with everything that has been said. And yes, comment sections on social media are a poor place to do research. Much better to publish things, which we are going to do, still working hard on finishing the manuscript of our book. We're also making recordings. For instance, this Beethoven box contains 10 CDs with a beautiful booklet, 10 CDs containing all the symphonies played by Alberto and me on our beautiful pianoforte and a mind-blowing transcription by Karel Czerny, exactly in Beethoven's Tempi, in whole beat, and we didn't have any issue. Even the singers that participated in the Ninth Symphony last movement didn't have any problems at all. On the contrary, they finally could breathe. It was time to breathe. But all to say that I not necessarily agree with all comments made and 
comment sections are a poor place, as I said, to have a decent, a deep conversation about this. I also think that the comment section should be a place where you feel safe, where you can just leave a comment, ask a question, go into a conversation with each other and just have a great time. If that is really what the comment section can enable, then I'm happy that it exists and I'm happy to have made the video that brought you all together. And you have very active people on my channel that read through all the comments and try to sneak in and give their position. I'm not always very happy with that because very rarely those people actually take my points seriously. I would love to see a comment section where people that do not agree with me actually summarize the points that I make in full context and then go from there to make their own points. That would be much more helpful. But in this case of the Mozart Sonata Facile, I had that chess moment in the sense that some people were making comments, I'm going to show them to you in a second, that didn't realize that what they actually were saying was the complete opposite of what they wanted to say, of the statement that they wanted to make. I'm talking in particular on this comment. We're going to read the comment and the answers made on this comment, and then I'm going to give you my points. So Olaf, he wrote on that video, the Mozart video, the Sonata Facile, he wrote, anyway, you look at it, Moschlers didn't give a beginner's tempo for this sonata. Whole beat or single beat doesn't matter. It's still in line with his other fast Allegro tempos. And if the double beat, the, so the whole beat tempo is good for beginners, well, then Moschlers gave nothing but beginner's tempos for all of Mozart sonatas. I'm going to analyze that in a second. Let's just um, scroll through some comments and the answers here. Um, so Dimas Zelen Zelen Zelenka, you will recognize this name. He's often there as well. He said, brilliant comment. So there, there was something there that apparently struck a string with some people. I saw immediately the truth behind this comment. So I, I, I replied like, analyze your comment. Olaf replied, now Mr. Wim or Winters, you should analyze your video. You show a clip of a child playing this sonata in whole beat, but what you really show is that all of Moschler's Mozart tempos read in whole beat are tempos for children. He doesn't give a slower speed for this Allegro compared to the other sonatas, Mozart sonatas or whatever Allegro movements. To which I replied, that is exactly the point you're missing of your comment and still see not to see the implication of. Then Dimas came into the discussion. He said, the implication of the comment is that since the first movement of that Sonata Facile for beginners is Allegro and Marshallis Tempi for all Allegros in the same range, then Marshallis must have thought that all Mozart Allegros were at Tempi playable by beginners. However you define beginner, and however you define MMs, metronome marks, is that the implication of the video? So the point of Olaf is, and of Dimas, I guess, Moschus marked this sonata with quarter note 152. Moschus also acknowledged the sonata was for beginners. And so when you compare this tempo with other Mozart sonatas, Allegro, similar notation, Moschus tempi for those sonatas are in the same range. So it's not that the Sonata Facile was giving a different metronome mark than other Allegro movements. Well, not exactly the same, but they're in the same range. For, Mo for Moschlis, clearly, this Sonata Facile's Allegro was not different for, from a more difficult Allegro movement of another Mozart Sonata. And so the point that Olaf wants to make here is if this beginner sonata is marked 152 and 152 is whole beat, then all the other Mozart Allegro sonata movements marked by Moschelis are also movements or pieces for beginners. And we know that factually that's not the case. So therefore, the assumption of a whole beat metronome mark in the case of the sonata facially is a false claim. I have to say sometimes I, I, I'm, I admire the creativity of people that keep looking for back doors to escape something that's inevitably in front of us. I do understand it in a way. It's like I said, keeping the status quo. And not only that, keep what we like, keep the current practice, keep modern practice, the way we play that music of the past today. Again, both mainstream and hip, they're much less different than you would think. They're they're actually one family of performances. 
to keep that, but to still be able to connect that to the original idea of the composer. That's actually the only thing what I'm doing here. When you accept the WBMP, then it's everything what modern orchestras or players are doing. You disconnect that from the intention of the composer. And I guess it's that's what drives people to keep looking for these hidden back doors that actually when you open them, there is nothing behind that. The major mistake in the reasoning is this. The difference between the sonata facile and other Mozart sonatas is not the tempo. It's the complexity of the piece. The sonata facile is a very simple piece to play. There are a lot of elements in that work that actually are great for beginners. You have independence of hands, you have a very simple Alberti bass, you have a very simple melody, there are few scales, it's C major, whereas other Mozart movements are more complex, you have polyphony, you have complex, more complex structure, you have more complex scales. And another point is this, why would Mozart write a piece in an allegro movement which would have a completely different tempo compared to another allegro movement of another sonata? That would be creating chaos in his own works. He marked the sonata facially with Allegro. And so obviously, also Moscheles knew that. So when Moscheles marked 152 here for this beginner piece, he marked similar tempo for other Allegro movements. That's, the, that's logic itself. And so it's not that the markings for difficult pieces prove that the marking for the sonata facially is a single beat marking. No, it just proves that all these allegro movements are in the same family. It's just the sonata facially was easier. The real conclusion you can make from this comparison between the 152 for the sonata facially and the 152-ish tempi that Moshe's gave for the other sonatas is that we play today these other sonatas way too fast. If you go back 250 years in history, what, what do you expect again? You pass beyond the train, even beyond any invention of steam engine. We are in the 18th century. And I've read some comments also saying like, yeah, but people there had lessons every day and they practiced like hours and hours and hours. That might be true, but that doesn't change anything. The idea that amateurs in these days were actually surpassing the lung lungs and the barren bones of today it's just preposterous that's the, there isn't how can you even start to think that you have a society today that technically is so much advanced compared to that time but on music because they had more time well i see conservatory students today play and practice even more than 12 hours a day some actually destroy their bodies even before their 20s when you were in Chopin's piano class, and Chopin, can we agree on that, was not an amateur. But when you would be in Chopin's class and you would practice more than three hours, he would yell at you. And finally, and this is, this is a very important point, when you make that claim that, that Moshle's tempo for the Sonata Facile is actually a single beat tempo, so the implication of that is that that tempo is not for beginners, then you should be able to back that statement up with facts, with a source, with something from which we can really understand and see that Moshe's indeed gave a tempo indication, in spite of the fact he labeled that sonata also as for beginners, but that in spite of that he gave a tempo indication that was not for beginners, but for the top virtuosos of our time. Not saying that in his time 152 would be unreachable um, for pianists of his level, but where do we see that? It's not in the score, it's not in other scores, it's not in documents, it's not in letters. He didn't write anything about that in his diary, which is a beautiful, unbelievable, interesting and essential document. Also, if you want, if you want to start your journey in temporary reconstruction, Marshall's diary is where you start. You have everything there. We don't see anything. There is nothing. There is nothing written ever. Not by Marshallis, not by students of Marshallis, not by contemporaries, not by future ed editors. That nothing that backs the statement that Olaf made that 152 is not a beginner's tempo. And that's the major point, actually. The previous analysis was just like deconstructing a comment made by pure logic. 
But this point, the lack of evidence to back your claim, makes your argument fall apart completely. And that's really, really, really important to realize. You cannot say out of the blue, Moshe's obviously gave a metronome mark. That was not for beginners. That was actually not for because we see similar uh, tempi given and, and other movements. And no, where is that? Where can you have to give me more than just your opinion? And as a final point, I just want to repeat what I said at the beginning. If you want to be active in reconstructing something of the past, especially something of music, which is so hard, you have to create a context. You cannot take one sentence. And then start from there, from an assumed reality. The 152, not being for beginners, is an assumed reality. And from there, build your case. It's not possible. But more than that, you have to connect it to other sources. And finally, finally, at the end, you have to bring it back to the question, what is the problem? And yes, I keep seeing people in the comments, it's like, like, yeah, most, the majority of metronome marks from that time are fine. No! They're not, if you say that, you don't know what you're talking about. The majority of metronome marks of that time is not fine. A large portion is technically unplayable. Our human bodies are not made for those tempi. They're not made now, they were not made in the past, they won't be evolving to a situation in which we can play 15 to 20 to 25 notes per second. And even if we could, our brain cannot consume that many notes. Even today you find literature in which the limit of what we can actually distinguish is 10 notes per second. And that's the maximum. We can, we can do that for a very short time. And guess what? That's also the historically described maximum limit of notes per second that one can play. But that's absolutely not enough to cover for the majority of the metronome marks that surpass that easily. And so you have to go back to the roots of the problem. What kind of problem do we want to solve? And just taking one sentence and then even add to that an assumed reality. Well, it can make you... It can make you feel good for a moment, but then you open your piano and you take that Czerny or Beethoven or whatever score you want to play and there's a metronome mark that you cannot reach. And so the only thing that you actually did by doing that is restore the problem. And then we are back at the beginning of the circle. We start from there. What's the solution? We have two solutions. The metronome can, can, be, can be read, can be used in two ways. Either you use it as we do today, like in a single beat uh, motion, or you use it as many physicists still use it today, or oftentimes use it like in a whole beat cycle. You don't have more options than those, but one, which, when one option doesn't work, well, the other remains. And finally, 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 to really close this video, I would show, I would like to show you a comment of made by Nicolas. And actually, that comment represents many comments made on my channel. And this is actually what comments like these keep me going. He says, Nicola says, thank you, Wim, for making this amazing music accessible to not professional musicians as myself, for the joy of being able to play at normal speed, enjoying the harmony and not feeling that I'm too slow, for knowing that this music can be for everybody and not just for the best. Greetings from Chile. Well, if I would have to give one essential reason why I keep doing this the reconstruction of the WMP BMP is for me like that's like not saying that I'm a grandmaster in this compared to chess players but invite me to a symposium I, I, I don't think you will you will be able to corner me for me that's solved but the fact that people like Nicolas and there are many people like him thanking me for the fact, for the for the very simple fact that what actually happens, they get the permission to wake up in the morning and realize that they can get rid of that feeling that whatever they do at the piano is not good enough. Well, that's one of the sick things of our time, that we have this classical music bubble, this elite bubble that keeps telling to the audiences, to the amateurs, to the students, like, you're not good enough, practice a little bit more because we have here the metronome marks, right? And then when you analyze their own play, they don't meet those metronome marks either. And instead of just sitting around the table, 
reaching hands to each other and said, shall we, shall we solve that once and for all? No, no, we, we stick to the status quo because it creates also an element of power, I guess. And apparently it's very difficult to just sit down at the table, see each other, look each other in the eyes and say like, shall we go for the truth? Even, even if I made claims in the past myself that go completely in the other direction, I think that's a major problem. But giving the amateur permission to play that sonata factually in 76 and stand up to their teacher the moment they say, and now you go faster, then you should ask like, why? I have here a metronome mark. Do you recommend that for beginners? No. Then we play it in 76 quarter note because you don't have another answer. And this may sound a little bit aggressive, but it is actually not. We are so used to just say yes to the musician placed in a higher position, especially on a conservatory level, masterclass level, but also a music school. Question your teacher, question your professor, go on masterclasses and say, hey, I have Chernyu Bistu 299, it's playable, right? Then play it because it's for beginners. That's what you should do. Yes, at 52, I still would enjoy that idea. And it's necessary, guys. When you are in a position where you have power over people, which is a teaching position by definition, then you should be very careful with that position. You should be very aware that it should not be a position that gives you authority to, covers up, to cover up for things that you don't know. When you don't know things, you say, I don't know. And guess what will happen? Those students of yours, they will do everything in their power to help you solving the case. But in the case of temporary construction, you don't have many options, unfortunately or fortunately. Okay, guys, leave me in the comments what you think. Don't be afraid, I won't make, maybe I will make more of these videos if you like me to do that. And again, it's not to downplay people, but if you make arguments over and over and over again, I mean, I, I feel kind of justified to going into the comment section and pick your comments then and say, okay, let's talk about it. What did you really say? What did you miss? What is my take on that? That's actually everything. And at the end, we have to share this guy. There's only one Beethoven. Music brings people together. It should. And there are more important things in life, maybe, to um, solve than just a metronomic problem. But you need people for everything. And this falls into my part of my life. So I'm happy to do that. Guys, check it out, the box. You want to have that? We are also on Bandcamp. You can also stream there the sonatas, not the sonatas, the sonatas we are recording right now. Alberto's doing that. The symphonies three times and then Bandcamp will ask you to give us a little bit of money, which is rightfully so because this is four years of work and not just a little bit. This is a huge investment of time and also, also actually financially. So check it out. You would do me a great favor. And by doing that, you support the project and you make sure that we can keep going. Okay, that was it for today. Thanks for watching. We see each other very soon again. Bye.